This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good evening, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for May 5, 2023. And in the news this evening, pilot confirmed dead after St. Mary plane crash. Police have identified the deceased in a small plane crash near Highgate in St. Mary on Friday morning. He is pilot and engineer Dudley Beak. One passenger was on board. Beak was unresponsive when he arrived at the University Hospital of the West Indies. It is reported that the small aircraft was en route from Tinsopen to Boscobel in his Eurocoupe. The former Jamaica Defense Force officer built his first hangar at the Ian Fleming Airport in the 1970s in Boscobel, St. Mary. There are at least four generations of pilots in his family, starting out with his grandfather. His father, Victor Beek, was the first commanding officer of the Jamaica Defense Force Air Wing. 24-year-old man charged over fatal shooting at party in Manchester. The police in Manchester on Thursday charged a man in relation to the fatal shooting of another and the injury of two others at a party in Top Greenville District in April. 24-year-old carpenter Davian Allen, otherwise called a Little Chubby, has been charged with murder, wounding with intent, possession of a prohibited weapon, and using a prohibited weapon to commit a felony. Investigations led to Allen's arrest on Tuesday, May 2. His court date is being finalized. The police report that about 12.09 a.m. on Saturday, April 30, Allen and 38-year-old Andre Hines, otherwise called a Claffy, a construction worker of Top Greenville District, were at a party when an argument developed between them. Allen, who was allegedly armed with a handgun, opened fire hitting Hines and two other patrons. The police were alerted and the injured people were taken to the hospital, where Hines was pronounced dead on arrival and the other two persons admitted. Woman set ablaze in Montego Bay during dispute with a prostitute. A 27-year-old woman is being treated at hospital and her attacker sought following an incident early Thursday morning in Montego Bay, St. James, in which she was reported a dose with gasoline and a set ablaze by a prostitute who accused her of invading her space. It's reported that about 12.30 a.m., the woman who hails from Hart Street in Montego Bay was at a location along Railway Lane when she got involved in a quarrel with a female prostitute. The dispute escalated into a physical confrontation, during which the accused ran for a container of gasoline, which she poured on the victim and then set her ablaze. The woman's life was saved by residents who put out the blaze and rushed her to the hospital, where she was treated for burns to 40% of her body and admitted in serious condition. Her attacker is still being sought by the Barnett Street Police. Police sees ganja found in an abandoned church in St. Elizabeth. A team of officers assigned to the Era 3 Narcotics Police Division seized 250 pounds of ganja during an operation in Knoxwood District in Lacovia, St. Elizabeth on Thursday. The Jamaica Constabulary Forces Corporate Communications Unit says that between 9.30 a.m. and 5.00 p.m., police were in the area when an abandoned church was searched. The police say during the search, several pieces of ganja were seen tied to strings inside the building. No one was arrested in relation to this seizure. Former bank employee freed of sexual offense charges. Former bank employee Darren Daly was freed on Thursday of sexual offense charges after appearing before the court for nine years. Daly said while he is relieved that his ordeal is over, during the period, his life was a living hell. He said he lost his job because of the case and was unable to get any worthwhile employment because of the stigma attached to the alleged offenses. He eventually got a job as an assistant to coach at a prominent high school, but said he could not travel overseas with the team for track events because the court ordered him to surrender his travel documents and report to the police three times per week. I am an innocent man. My life was turned upside down because of these false charges which are dragged on for so long in court. It is a grave injustice for a criminal case to be dragging on for so long. However, I am eternally grateful to my lawyer Hugh Wildman, who fought my legal battle and through his expertise, vigorously challenged the false testimony, which ended in my acquittal, Daly said. 
He was acquitted of several charges, one of which was having sexual intercourse with a person under the age of 16 on two occasions. He was also freed of two counts of procuring sexual intercourse with a child and the procuring grievous sexual assault of a child. The complainant, who was 15 years old at the time of the alleged offenses in 2014, testified in the home circuit court that on one occasion, Daly took her to his house and sexually assaulted her. She also testified that at another time, six men abducted her from Barbican and took her to Daly's house, where they all sexually assaulted her. She said Daly took her to the Wyndham Hotel in New Kingston, where she was intimate with men for money. During cross-examination, Wildman showed the complainant a newspaper article which stated that the hotel was not in operation in 2014 because of a fire at the hotel in 2013. The complainant said she used the money she received from the men to help to support her family, but her mother testified on the cross-examination that the complainant did not take home any money. The complainant also admitted she lied when she said she was abducted in Barbican and taken to the accused home. After the prosecution closed its case, Wildman made a no-case submission that the Crown's case was so discredited that no jury properly directed in law could arrive at a verdict of guilt and the prosecutor conceded. Justice Vaughn Smith then directed the jury to return a verdict of not guilty on all counts. Attorney at law Duke Foote appeared with Wildman. Alric Campbell condemns a suspected arson attack on PNP constituency office. Deputy Mayor of Pointmore and a councillor for the Edgewater Division, Alric Campbell, has condemned a suspected act of arson perpetrated against the, the constituency office of the People's National Party in the St. Catherine Southeast area. I neither actively or passively support any resistance. That is not in my nature. We all are comrades at the end of the day, he told the news. Whomever burned the constituency office, whether it was JLP supporters, supporters of the Dawes team, supporters of the Alric team, it is something that is wrong, it is something I do not condone and it was not done on my behalf. It is actually something that is negating the respect that I would have developed over the years and I just want to tell my supporters generally that you know Alric and you know that is something I would not have supported. Supporters of Campbell were riled up at a decision to scupper his bid to be the man to be charged with winning the seat for the party at the next general election and to be the party's standard bearer in southeast St. Catherine. The decision was made by party president Mark Golding at a meeting held at the PNP's Old Hope Road headquarters on Wednesday that medical doctor Alfred Dawes would be that man instead. Angered by the decision, Protesters burned the images of Dr. Dawes in effigy on Wednesday night in reaction to the party's decision to sideline Campbell. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.